Yeah. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, friends, uh, welcome to uh, this edition of Friday Fundas. As uh, maybe some of you may be aware, Friday Fundas is a series that we have started since last uh, four, uh, four to five months where we take up uh, topics which are of interest to chartered accountants, but at the same time are, they are a little bit offbeat topics, not directly related to the core practice. It's it can be a variety of topics and today actually we have a very interesting uh, topic. I think, see, uh, any practitioner, medium, small, large, uh, today we always face the problem of talent, recruitment of talent, retention of talent. And uh, I think currently today, if as aside from our own knowledge, possibly our human resources or the human assets that we have are the most valuable assets that a CA firm can have. And as it is, we always say that we are training centers for a lot of uh, upcoming, uh, you know, CFOs and so everybody passes through our firms. But yes, uh, today the way our practice is structured, the expectations that they're there, uh, it becomes very important to attract and recruit and retain the right kind of uh, talent in our firm if we are to grow properly. So uh, today we have this topic, uh, which is a very interesting topic, the art of recruitment. And we have a very uh, <laughs> learned faculty with us, uh, CA Namita Agrawal, Agarwal, who uh, I can say being a chartered accountant is, uh, I was just discussing with her, she's very uniquely poised to uh, speak on this because she's now fully into HR and uh, recruitment services and that's very very interesting uh, it also shows what kind of fields are open to all of us if, if we set our mind to us so uh, uh, namita a very warm welcome and let me take this opportunity to uh, introduce namita agrawal so uh, namita is a qualified chartered accountant and a com uh, also a company secretary she's uh, been a ranker in the company secretary exams and from uh, and she uh, she belongs to the 2008 batch and she's also a law graduate and has a, also done her commerce graduation from nm college uh, aside from being a tax professional she has now moved on to becoming as i said an hr professional for almost a decade she started her career with Cyril Amarchand mangaldas one of the largest law firms and uh, also she has worked with uh, uh, Praveen Shah and company a ca firm based in mumbai uh, Namita, they later on joined uh, uh, Monster.com, a global talent platform where she has been. She was heading the BFI sales and strategy of candidates, thousands of candidates, and then she's uh, currently now working. Uh, she uh, is now working as vice president at Vahura, one of the top executive search firms, and she handles business development as well as recruitment. Uh, she's currently spearheading a career platform for Vahura, which is legalfinjobs.com exclusive for uh, it's a platform exclusively for legal and finance professionals and wahura has successfully placed more than 10000 professionals across various organizations in the last 12 plus years so i think she is very richly uh, poised to uh, give us some very interesting uh, information and uh, tips on the art of recruitment so namita a very warm welcome thank you for accepting our invitation and before we start off, I would like to bring every, uh, request everybody to come to attention for the ICI motto.
Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Namita, the floor is yours. You may kindly take over the session. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul, uh, for the kind introduction and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'll start with the screen share. Uh, start with the presentation. So good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, it is visible. Okay, great. So uh, like sir said that uh, recruitment is one of the key areas where a uh, lot of, uh, lot of uh, professionals, whether they are practicing professionals or they are in industry, uh, find it challenging and it is also, but at the same time, it's a very, very important task uh, which has to be done to grow any organization. So uh, before we... Uh, you know, get on to the details of the art of recruitment, what, the, what are the do's and don'ts, how we can uh, master that art. I would just like to understand what is the kind of audience uh, which is there today because what I understand that uh, the registrations are uh, a mixed bag from experienced professionals as well as, you know, young uh, CAs. So if you could just put on the chat box as you would know that, you know, yeah, when, even from a recruitment standpoint, these terminologies are important that uh, whether you are from Gen X, Millennials or Gen Z. So depending on where you are, uh, the requirement of the recruitment also changes and the employer mindset is also different. So if you are from which generation, I will just would like to understand the audience and that will help me in the flow. Also mention whether you are an industry professional or a practicing professional because, you know, the nuances of recruitment in both the uh, buckets is a bit different. So if you could help me with uh, these two things in the chat box, it will be great. Also, while everyone is, uh, you know, putting their uh, details, uh, you would note that this, uh, as the name suggests, Art of Recruitment, uh, the focus of the presentation will be from an employer standpoint. While I understand that some of you may not be employers right now, given the, you know, uh, registration details I saw, a lot of them are very young with two, three years of experience. So unless you are in practice already, hats off and you are uh, already an employer. But in case you are, uh, you have registered uh, for the event and you are uh, on a job seeker side also, this will help you to understand the psyche of the employer. You will understand uh, from this presentation how the recruitment happens, what are the things the employer looks into and that will help you in uh, making your candidature strong. Right. So now, as I can see, there's Rajesh, Varsha, there are Gen X also, great. So there are people, uh, senior professionals here. Most of you all will be in millennials. Gen Z will be hardly few because if you are a CA, uh, you'll be between, say, even a fresher CA will be in the age of 21 to 25. So very few of you all may, may be in Gen Z. Most of, like I can see, Sangeeta, Hinal, mean millennials in practice. There are people in industry also. So but there is a mixed bag. There is a Gen Z uh, professional also in practice. So good to know that. That very young chartered accountants who have uh, ventured into practice. Great. So got, a, some, got some sense of what the audience is like. Now moving on. Just this slide. Is my slide changing? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So, uh, like while we understand that hiring the right talent is important, I've just quoted some of the uh, things which have been said by great business leaders we all uh, admire and look up to. Uh, Warren Buffett had said that somebody uh, once said that in looking for people to hire, you look for three qualities. Second. Look for three qualities, integrity, intelligence, and energy. And if you don't have the first, the other two will kill you. So, you know, these are some of the qualities which you may also look at if when you are hiring. And 
uh, another very good quote by indra new is uh, success of any company is in direct proportion to its ability to attract retain and unleash the potential of its people the most uh tim cook has said the most important thing is recruiting if you get the team right the rest of the organization will take care of itself so uh this these are some of the quotes which emphasize the same thing which we we are aware that recruitment is important it is very difficult uh and it is something which is a challenge not just for small organization but across the organizations because every organization has its own challenges even if it's a big organization it has a very big brand name still because the volume of the uh, recruitment is high there's competition in the market it is not easy for them also to uh, hire the right talent and to retain after that now our presentation will be divided into a uh, few i have divided the steps of uh, recruitment into certain steps step 0 is planning step 1 is attracting the right talent both active and passive step 2 will be screening the candidates step 3 will be salary negotiations and offer roll out and step 4 would be joining so these are some of the uh, key steps in which i have divided the hiring process and i'll take you through each of the steps to see where are the areas of improvement if you are hiring for your organization step 0 what i call is planning so here it is important just uh, being you know chartered accountants being finance professionals uh, audit professionals we understand financial ratios very well but it is also important for us to understand our hiring ratios this will be applicable only if you are already like a organization which has been there for a few years you need to have these uh, ratios worked out for your company a lot of especially practicing professional because a lot of them are uh, part of this uh, session uh, they do not know this they have never evaluated they have never kept a track of this so it's important for you uh, as a, a business leader or uh, your hr team can help you with these statistics that what is your hiring ratio uh, it is like a pyramid right you start with the pool of applications say a number is 50 uh you may end up shortlisting just 20 because from 50 to 20 you will reject the resumes uh, at the resume level so from 50 to 20 it's without any interaction it is at, on the basis of resume uh you uh, uh reject the candidates and that would be on the basis of the qualification number of years of experience relevancy of the experience their location uh right so these uh, the, the nature of experience which they carry so basis that uh this 50 may uh come down to 20 this is based on my experience of recruitment in many years this is the place where maximum filter happens once you have shortlisted uh say 20 people out of that also there will be a lot of people who may back out who may get another opportunity so you may end up say interviewing around nine people for the first round of interview uh till the time you uh, move the candidates to the a final stage uh, basis uh, your evaluation criteria there may be 5 and from 5 you may select around 3 so uh, and again out of 3 if you have only one position open you may offer one of them and one may join may not join but this is what i'm trying to convey here that if you have to have one person joining you may have to start at the uh, bottom of the pyramid uh, you may have to have at least 50 candidates ka pool so that you reach the stage where one person can join so you can understand how difficult the process is maybe in some cases uh, the leakage is less then you may have little better ratios but typically this is what happens also it's important that from the uh, interview round to selection round uh, the ideal ratio in the industry is 1 is to 3 to 1 is to 5 so if you have interviewed five people uh, and you have not even selected one then there is some gap in terms of the people you are shortlisting for interview or your expectations are very high as compared to what is the availability of talent so it's important that if somebody has reached the final round of interview and still people are getting rejected and which happens in certain organizations so then uh, you know you as a organization has to streamline their interview process and you also if you have uh, you know multiple openings or you have a single opening you should try and select more people because from 3 there is a chance that 
one or two may drop at offer stage. In fact, there also, depending on the organization type, if it's a smaller organization, a mid size organization, there are a lot of drops from selection to actual uh, offer acceptance to joining. So after acceptance, also people may drop off and some may drop even at the offer stage, they may not accept the offer. So th this these things are important for you to do the planning before you start the recruitment process or at least at the start of the year so that you uh, have the clarity of how you will proceed during the year. Now we'll move on to how do we, after we have analyzed what are our statistics, how do we uh, start the hiring process? First step is attracting the talent. For that, you need to understand the profile of the organization in detail. This is also, uh, uh, and the EVP, what is the value pro employee value proposition from the business owner. So if you are the business owners, it will be you yourself. If you are part of the HR or, or you know, you're taking care more from the HR standpoint, then it's important to get all the details of the organization and what is the USP, what we call or EVP in this case for the employees. Every organization thinks that they have a lot of things uh, which are good for the employee, but it's important to put it down in a document uh, so that the employees come to know. This is again a place where I feel a lot of practicing uh, chartered accountants uh, do not portray what they are doing good in uh, in a manner that it is attracting the talent. So it's very important that this is uh, uh, penned in a document and made available to the uh, people who would like to join your organization. So you need to build those employer branding strategies for positive brand from short to midterm to long term period. So it's important that you invest your time, you invest your money, people, for what are the ways in which you can do your employer branding today is an uh, era of digital age. So whether it's on social media, whether it's your own uh, uh, website, whether it's uh, your physical presence, you know, how do you uh, use the different uh, way, different ways in which you can do an employer branding so as to attract the talent. It's very, very important. Also, next is uh, you need to define your job roles and requirements clearly along with the budget, compensation budget and have a proper job description. This is again a place where a lot of organization uh, take it very casually. They do not prepare JDs. They would just say that, you know, it's a requirement for audit. It is a requirement for tax or it's a finance uh, requirement, especially in smaller organizations. So it's important that you invest some time. This is a one-time exercise. Either you do it yourself, have, uh, you know, your HR do it or outsource those uh, things. But it's important that uh, these things are there in place because the, the thing is that those certain things may look very obvious. Uh, the candidates do expect uh, the clarity on the role and they need certain documents to read. Uh, so it's important for you. These are small things, will take some time, but it's important that you do it and it will actually make a lot of difference in attracting the talent. Visa is you uh, not having a JD and just uh, putting in short what is the role will reduce the count of people who would apply for any uh, opening in your organization. In terms of sourcing, again, there are multiple ways in which you can source the candidate depending on the nature of the candidate you're looking at, whether you're looking at chartered accountants, semi-qualifieds, BCom grads, MBAs, what is the kind of hiring, what's the volume, how fast do you want, what is your internal team strength, like do you have a dedicated HR team you don't have and how big is that team and how much is your budget, you can decide how do you want to divide your budget for recruitment? This is over and above, of course, your salary, which you pay. That's your employee cost. So you have options like your company website, social media, HR consultants and search firms like us. You have external job boards, employee and other referrals. So uh, like it was mentioned in the introduction, uh, Vahura also has a talent platform called a leg of in job that's dedicated uh, for hiring legal and finance professionals. So there is leg of in job. There are multiple other uh, platforms which help you in doing LinkedIn is one of them. So you need to see how you want to invest. Some of them are free. Some of them are paid. Uh, again, there are different plans which are available on uh, different platforms. Happy to, you know, if any of the organizations here 
need some guidance on how uh, they should select uh, the right source for their talent acquisition, happy to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with uh, them. But just to give you these things, as these are some of the uh, ways in which you can tap it. Employee and other referrals, you can get referrals internally by running some schemes, employee referral uh, program. You can have referral from other clients. So a lot of times, referral can come just from acquaintances. You know, your friend, your community at large can also give you references. So these are the, but again, everything has to be done in a systematic manner. Your JDs, your company profile, everything should be put up in a uh, right manner so that uh, the right talent gets attracted. Otherwise, you will always feel that either the quantity is less or the quality is less. Uh, but if you do all the steps correctly, the chances will increase in terms of both quantity and quality. Uh, also, factor in, uh, it's very important uh, in today's era that you have diversity and inclusion at a very small organizations where it's very small, it may not be... Uh, possible but when once the organization grows and if you feel that the diversity element is uh, missing then it's important for you to see how you can uh, make certain policies which uh, accommodate diversity uh, in terms of gender in terms of uh, differently able people and other uh, aspects On the uh, on attracting talent, what are the factors which talent considers? Again, you have divided this into, uh, try to make almost an exhaustive list of both monetary benefits and non-monetary benefits. Uh, uh, we may just think, a lot of times, uh, people just think that it is about salary and uh, candidates are just about salary. They do not join because the salary is less as compared to, say, a bigger organization. But that's not completely true. There are a lot of factors which uh, play a role in candidate uh, accepting uh, to join any organization. So in monetary, you have the total pay, fixed pay. So total pay is the overall, what's the CTC, what's the fixed component, what's the variable component, what's the retention pay. So by retention pay, uh, I mean uh, the, the uh, fixed amount which is paid at the end of the year to retain them. You may call it as a retention bonus or you may call it as a fixed bonus. A lot of companies have it as a one month salary uh, thing, which is there as a fixed amount at the end of the year. So they have that clarity at the initial a few years of the career post that they have a variable bonus over and above that bonus. So depending on how you want to uh, segregate your salary, you may, if you want that retention is a big issue in your case, it's, it's a good strategy to have a fixed amount paid at the end of six months, end of one year, end of two years, three years. So that is again, a very common practice, which helps people retain talent because there is a lump sum amount, which, the candidates get or the employees get at the end of a certain tenure. And of course, you can have variable over and above uh, these fixed bonuses. What's the yearly growth which the company is providing? So again, a lot of times uh, companies are very uh, skeptical about discussing all these things. But uh, uh, when you are hiring mid to senior level talent, it's important that you can be open about it if you have certain statistics which show that you give a 8 to 10 percent growth, you give a 10 to 15 percent growth, you give a 20, 30 percent growth. If you have some statistics, you know that you have done some things based on performance. Uh, there is no harm in communicating that to people because uh, unless they get, get the long term visibility, it may be difficult to uh, difficult for them to decide today whether they want to invest uh, their career in a particular company. So if they can be demonstrated that there have been people in the company who have grown uh, in terms of hierarchy, in terms of money, uh, that is important uh, for anybody's career, then that will again attract more talent. What are the reimbursement policies, mediclaim policy, retiral benefits like PF, gratuity, tax saving uh, how how efficient is your salary structure like if you uh, you are paying salary you are paying retention uh, retainer amount you know the taxing uh, the tax benefits will be completely different so again how do you structure the tax so that it is in a it is tax efficient as cs we do understand that we'll do our best but sometimes still again, there are firms which do not optimize the uh, payout in a very tax efficient manner 
so that can be uh, done to attract talent and all this should be very clearly demonstrated to the candidates uh, at the time of you know offer stage this is very very important because as i said there's a large drop off which happens from offer to joining so please make sure that all the things which you have are clearly communicated rather than um, you know playing low on these things what are the leave encashment policies if you have leave policy and there is an encashment policy some people make it part of the ctc some do not that's a call which you have to take but some there are organizations which will put you know computer usage also in the ctc so uh, mostly smaller organizations or practicing cs do not do it but lot of industry uh, you know industry corporates they have certain uh, elements like gratuity also they put in the ctc itself which inflates the ct ctc they'll put uh, leave and cash men they'll put usage of computer and you know certain things which you may generally they'll put uh, you know concessional loan say a bank uh, uh, there are a lot of banks which do this that they have uh, a perquisite of getting loan at a concessional rate so they will inflate the ctc now what ha happens is the they are playing on the optics or the mind of the candidate the candidate is comparing a ctc of company a versus company b which does not have the same elements so it is not actually comparable but just optically he feel that you know ctc is high so it's very important for you to put a ctc which is all inclusive to the extent possible not that you say something incorrect but try to put your ctc in a way that uh all the elements are included and the breakup is then given so that the total figure looks comprehensive you don't have to inflate it i have seen a lot of companies which underplay this like they will put monthly salary instead of total pay though they can do a multiply by 12 but do not get into uh, what is your pay in hand uh, what your monthly payout will be this your salary will be this that is something you can put it in the document but the total ctc should be one figure and try to make it as comprehensive and as comprehensive as possible so that it comes as a big figure any other perks which the you know company would be giving uh, these will be all the monetary benefits on non monetary side again in after covid all the more this has become important in terms of culture flexibility these are the two important things which time and again we hear that people leave even if the salary is being matched by two organizations the one of the things which will rank one organization over other is flexibility so flexibility culture you know how uh uh how is the learning curve so in culture i'll have another i have another slide where i'll talk more about culture uh, what are the training uh, facilities in the company how is the mentorship from seniors what's the designation so again with practicing cs uh, i work with a lot of them a uh, lot of them are flat organizations they don't have designations but that is something which works at a junior level but the moment people grow in the organization after 3 or 2 3 years 4 years 5 years it is important for you to have some hierarchy i feel again this is a subjective thing you may have a flat organization based on merit but unless you have a designation it becomes difficult for those uh, employees to portray themselves in the market right today in the world of social media uh on linkedin if they do not have a proper designation uh they cannot portray themselves in the correct manner so whether it's a manager uh whether he is a director it's very important that you give certain designations as the uh, employees move up the ladder what are your leave policies what are your working days so again 6 days working 5 day working two saturdays working not, not working all this play a lot of uh, you know that that plays a vital role in Uh, attracting talent what are the leadership opportunities sometimes in some some organizations because they are flat organization the uh, the advantage is that they don't have to wait every year for a promotion if they are good they can get leadership opportunity much faster what are the rewards and recognition so these are important things uh, not just for attracting talent but also for retaining talent i think almost all the things will help you not just bringing them in but if they are good they will help you in retention if they are not so good uh, you will lose talent because of those reasons uh, you also have to see like of course you may not be the best in all the factors so what we suggest is there is something like a median you have to see what is the industry doing for certain things you may want to be 
uh, above the median certain parameters you may be at the median and certain parameters you may be below the median if you are like below the median for all the factors and you are expecting very good talent then it will be definitely challenging so you see where do you uh, where are you in the you know overall industry where do you stand uh, as against each of the factors and then you can play around it if you need the best best talent and your pay is on par with everybody then what is it different than uh, other players which helps you uh be apart from the other players so that that's something you will have to work uh with your internal uh stakeholders right. on the intangible uh, factors some more details like culture like i said what is the uh, character and personality of the firm what are the values tradition traditions beliefs interactions behavior attitude all of that makes culture. You know, a lot of people say that the culture of the organization is bad. It would uh, mean how they are treated, how they celebrate, how they uh, punish if there are mistakes, uh, how flexible they are. So, you know, all those things come under the culture, how demanding they are, how, uh, you know, in terms of their learning and the growth of the person, how committed is the organization. All that comprises your culture. Which, which definitely has a lot of impact. We have seen that very, very good organizations who have been there for 10 years to 20 years to 30 years also have a challenge just because of culture. Like everything else is good. Their salary may be decent uh, on the median, above the median. Uh, learning is very good. The work is awesome. They do superb work. They have very good clientele say in a practicing CA firm, but the culture, what they call this culture is not good. So you have to introspect what are the areas you can improve and uh, make a very good culture where talent is attracted and also portray that uh, in, in employer branding. So it's important that you have a culture and that culture is also kind of put up in certain ways by using social media, by using career pages and made known to the outside world also job satisfaction so this is more from also retention that uh, retention standpoint uh, job satisfaction is one of the main uh, reasons people leave that if they don't feel that uh, they are liking the work they don't feel valued they will leave uh, in long in short to long term short to mid term long term will of course uh, be good for you but uh, if the job satisfaction thing is uh, missing then uh, that can be a problem in retention. What is the leadership? They should be, uh, leadership is something, is looked upon as the ability of firm leadership to develop and communicate a clear strategy. So clarity is also important, uh, especially if there are certain internal changes which are happening in the organization, internal, external, any mergers, change in leadership. It's important that, uh, there is a communication again lot of places communication is lacking due to which lot of candidates feel that the job is not stable there is uncertainty around it people don't talk about it and then they lose the then they uh, lose the uh, talent rewards and recognition again this is something where uh, not lot of ca firms are doing much in this space it's important that certain uh, you know, events are organized to recognize uh, talent based on certain objective parameters. Uh, spot awards can be given whenever there is something uh, really good, say something like a BD uh, deal some junior person has done. Like somebody at the partner level, at director level is anyways expected to, be, to do BD. But if some junior has got any mandate uh, for the organization, you may just have a spot award. So it's very good for them to get something recognized immediately and it does not even uh, miss out in a, uh, in a long term. So just one second. Sorry. Uh, 
Another point is prestige. It uh, refers to the level of fulfillment and social pride of a professional on, on account of being associated with a firm. So whenever they get associated with a brand, you know, the prestige value becomes higher. When it is not a known brand, the prestige is less. So uh, you have to work around other things. And also in building your brand, the moment your brand is higher, the prestige thing will go up and also the kind of work which you do, right? It will be one of these two, three things will determine how uh, this prestige uh, matrix works for the talent. Work-life balance, again, this is one of the uh, problems which uh, talent is facing and the organization is facing, you know, how do you balance it? So here again, you have to see what best can be done. Uh, whether you are above the tangent, you are uh, below the tangent or you are just uh, at the median and see what best can be done to attract and retain talent. Otherwise, if there are long uh, working hours on a regular basis, it may be difficult to retain talent. And if there is uh, you know, long sitting, you have to see how you can compensate the candidates in monetary or non-monetary terms. You may have a party after every time there is a after the season is over you may uh you know have you know simple thing like ordering food for your employees sometimes you know makes the candidates feel valued so you have to see what are the small things which you can do for them so that uh this problem can be relatively uh, addressed Next, uh, after attracting the talent, uh, what are the ways in which you'll be screening the candidates? Key skills which you'll be looking at, you may be knowing it, but just for the recap, technical and grasping skills, communication skills, confidence of the person, longevity, how much of that long-term thing you can see in that candidate, uh, attitude, computer skills, salary expectations, Right. So these are the things which you will be checking uh, and accordingly deciding whether the person now that you have attracted the talent now, it's the ball is in your court. He is here for an interview and you have to evaluate him or her on uh, these factors. It is important for you to give a weightage to everything and not just one thing because a lot of times people give emphasis to say only technical skills. Sometimes they give a lot of emphasis to communication, sometimes uh, to salary expectations. On so the salary expectations also, given uh, the current scenario, it is very much likely that people may quote a high salary, but you should not uh, right away reject them basis the salary expectation. You see, firstly, it's important that at the start only the budgets are kind of defined, but at the same time, the salary expectations, uh, instead of rejecting somebody right away because of expectations, you evaluate him on all the other parameters and if he's fitting in, see what best you can provide and then see his or her reaction. A lot of times it happens that they quote something, but they may be ready to work at 30% less, 40% less, 20% less. It's just that they want to have their negotiation power, so they, they quote a higher salary. So do not reject them right away because of that. But see how much of negotiation scope is there. Attitude definitely is very important, which I'll also cover in the next slide. Communication skills, see how much of that is trainable. It's very, very important. When I do candidate-related workshops, I do tell them that, you know, this is one of the skills. There is a gap uh, and you need to really, really work on it. But at the same time, you have to see at the time of hiring that uh, where do you stand in the overall, you know, different factors. If you are really... Uh, best of the best firms then definitely you can expect the communication skills to be one of the main criteria one of the key criteria but in cases where uh, you do not have that uh, liberty of having everything on above the median then you may have to compromise a bit on communication skills and see how best you can train them on the job on technical skills also it's important that interview is you know a very small and a very subjective way to test a person. You may just ask four or five questions and you may feel that the person doesn't know anything or doesn't know enough. 
but we need to understand that all of them are chartered accountants. So I'm saying say in a chartered accountancy uh, hiring uh, scenario, all of them have uh, done their uh, education. They have studied everything. So try to see how objective you can make the evaluation process. You may have a little more longer test or something rather than asking just few questions and evaluating on basis that because that can be uh, like even a CA who has become a CA has become CA by scoring a 40 or a 50 percent. Uh, so 40 on an average, 50 overall, 50, 60 max. So 40 percent to score exam ke time bhi nahi aata tha. Isi le he didn't get, you know, as high marks. So having said that, you have to see uh, what are the things he's uh, ready to learn and see uh, that your evaluation process is little more comprehensive. Do not judge people just on the basis of very few questions. Try to give a little more comprehensive questionnaire. See if you can take help of external uh, service providers who can help you with the questionnaire and uh, make the process more objective rather than subjective. And of course, attitude, I also personally feel that's very, very important. <coughs> so your attitude is like Jack Ma has also said, your attitude is more important than your capability. So if the attitude is right, all the other things can be uh, uh, taken care of because that person will work towards improving the other things which are lacking. So which will uh, involve the, whether they are motivated, how enthusiastic they are, their willingness to learn, willingness to work without supervision especially when it is a hybrid model how much of initiative they take how much of willingness is there to work hard uh, whether there's clarity of mind or not and willingness to work hard can be very very subjective where you know a 70 uh, when you know the statement came for uh, of Narayan Muthi on 70 hour uh, work week you know there was a lot of uh, backlash so again that is a very subjective thing 70 hours, maybe more. So what is the sweet spot? You know, 50 hours, 60 hours, 40 hours. So there can always be subjectivity. You have to see what is uh, the requirement in your organization and how much do you think the candidate is willing to put it. I personally don't feel it is, def uh, you know, it is something which can be defined in terms of a particular number. But in general, uh, of course, everybody would want that, you know, hard work is something non-negotiable. So that is something you'll have to check at the time of interview as to how much they can uh, stretch as against what is the normal uh, work expectation. Some of the sample HR questions uh, which are there, in case you want these questions, I can, you know, send uh, certain slides here. I'm not reading all of it. So... These are some of the standard uh, or sample HR questions which will help you understand more about the candidates which are not on the technical side. What makes you angry? This is some, you know, one of the uh, things which uh, we ask in a lot of uh, interviews and it helps in it helps in understanding the psyche of the person what motivates you so these are some of the candidate question and candidate questions which will help you in understanding what the person is actually uh, thinking you know they, these are not related to the work I have some questions also coming in. I will answer those. And this holds good, like one of the questions, which is about articles. So this, all this holds equally good for articles as well as employees. In articleship also, if you have to attract talent, you have to have a good value proposition. You have to have uh, employer branding. If you are already an established brand, still you have competition. If you're not established brand, then... Uh, you have all the more work to be done in those areas. So, you know, why should we hire you? Why do you think you're suitable? Why do you want to join this company? Uh, there are also, you should also encourage the candidates to ask questions to you. That shows a little bit of openness and you will understand what are the things which candidate is thinking. 
so a lot of time this gets missed so unless candidates may ask questions like what role do you uh, handle because there could be different interviewers uh, what do the day to day responsibilities of the role look like could you let me know the name or the nature of the clients so these are the th things which candidates uh, you know these are some of the questions which they have in mind so either they may ask it or if they do not ask you may want to clarify because a lot of times again there is a communication gap the candidate wants to know 10 things uh, you may be okay to tell those 10 things but because he didn't ask you didn't answer you didn't you know talk about it and uh, if you are uh, someone who finds it difficult to attract talent it's important to give them an overall perspective what are the nature of your clients what is the hierarchy what's the growth you know breakup of ctc can can come at the offer stage uh, you may give them the feedback of the interview uh, there itself. If you feel that there are certain areas which they are lacking, you can talk about it. So again, as a uh, interview is again one more play uh, way, way in which you can showcase your brand. You clarify the process to him. How many rounds will be there? Who is going to be taking the interview? So when you set up the first interview, either you are calling any of your admin staff, HR staff, and tell them that who is the interviewer so that the person knows about it. Half the time I've seen candidates go, go and give the interview. They don't know who interview the So important that you make it very systematic and give them clarity as to who will be the interview, what interviewer, who is what is their designation. Provide feedback to the extent possible. If the volume is higher, you may not be able to do it, but it just gives the right uh you know a right flavor for the candidates uh, in the long term that you know overall my interview process was very good so that feel good if you want to leave them with a feel good factor even if they did not join it's important for you to give the feedback give them timelines if you do not uh, you do if it will take time you tell them that we'll get back after uh, two days we'll get back after one week we'll take get back after 15 days if it's going to take time then please inform them that in the every stage you meet them, it's important that you give them visibility so that uh, they wait for that much time if they are interested. And you can always uh, give them your contact details. This is again one of the tips which is there that you know you give a lot of people don't have the contact details of the interviewer. Uh, they were just contacted by email or they do not have the right person's contact details. So if you are the decision maker, you have liked the candidate, but you want to take some time, you please give your contact details and tell them to follow up. So in case you miss out because of your busy schedule and you also want to see that whether the candidate is serious enough or not, you tell them to follow up with you if you don't get back. So that will also show how much interest they are. Give them an opportunity to clarify doubts and leave them with a FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out whether they join or they don't join. They should feel that, you know, this is a good firm. I could have joined here. I should have joined here is what you should leave them after the interview. And they should be confused in choosing between your organization and any other organization. It's, of course, not possible that every person who is interviewing with you will join you, but at least leave them with a FOMO. So that it helps you in general in the long run. And he or she may also refer candidates to you. Even when they are just checking around in the market. How is this firm? How is this firm? You know, if your process has been good, you never know that that whole uh, you know, feel good factor can pass on to people in the market. And uh, it can help you in your hiring. Next step is uh, salary negotiations and offer. I come to the questions uh, at the end. I, I, I have read them because some of them will get covered in the later slides. I would like to understand like before we get uh, on to the next uh, step, which is salary negotiations and offer. Uh, I would like to understand from you all that uh, in terms of um, your hiring, whenever uh, you all have done hiring for you, which has been a problem, quantity of the candidates, quality of the prob, uh, candidates so uh, like you have not liked the candidates or candidates have not uh, you know accepted the offer 
So is it quantity, qualities, or candidates not accepting? Uh, if you can just put on the chat, uh, it will help me in understanding where are the leakages which happen in your hiring process. <coughs> I hope uh, uh, I was clear in the question. So my question is that as a organization, when you're hiring people, uh, what are your challenges, whether it's the quantity of the candidates, like you do not get enough applications or people do not apply. So you don't have enough pool only to evaluate or you get people to apply but the quality is something you don't like. Or third is you like the candidates, but the candidates do not join you, do not, uh, you know, join you, do not accept offer. At any stage, the candidate kind of declines, but you have liked the candidate. All three. Okay, Amal says all three. Quality and candidates not accepting. Okay. Quantity issue. Okay. Quantity and commitment. So again, commitment and all is something which, you know, you will have to develop uh, in the organization. They should feel like those, all the factors which we discussed, they should feel that the culture is good. They should feel that the salary is good. How to tackle the situation where the candidate is asking for 30 to 40% hike and his current CTC is not as per salary range. Pooja has asked this question. So we'll come on the salary, what all things can be covered there. Commitment and organizational goodwill. I didn't understand what is organizational goodwill. Uh, Sachin, if you can elaborate that. So commitment, I'm assuming you're asking that the commitment is not there from the side of the candidates and organizational goodwill, I did not understand. So I'll move on to the salary negotiations and I think some of the answers will get covered. You need to have a budget to understand what's the budget of the role and what are the exceptions you can make. Uh, if the candidate is good, what is the stretch you can do? That will be depending on, you know, how, how much is their budget and also your overall salary structure because a lot of time what happens is that you already have certain people at X salary. Uh, and if you're taking somebody at the same experience level, you cannot deviate a lot. So you see what are the ways in which you can make it like you see in terms of money, how much exception you can make and how you have to structure it is second thing. But you have that thing uh, uh, with you or your HR uh, team, because a lot of times the candidates get from the if you remember in my pyramid, you may reject candidates from that 50 to 20 just because the salary is high. But just meet the candidates if their overall relevancy is very good. So it's very important for you to see how much you can stretch if the match is there. If the match is not there, of course, we understand you will not be able to uh, give a high salary because your expectations from the role are not getting fulfilled by the candidate. But if the uh, match is there, see how much exception you can do. What is the, uh, you should always have that scope for negotiation which is there, you can expand the role based on the strengths of the candidate. So if you feel the candidate is very outgoing, you may involve him, he or she in business development, in branding, right? So you uh, can do certain things which the candidate can help you, uh, uh, not just in execution, but in some other areas, you know, something on the HR side. Of course, HR is also part as a business owner or as a, a senior member, HR is also one of the functions or if uh, for say matter, article, hiring so if somebody is you know asking for a higher salary you may want to just expand their role based on their strengths and their interests which will help you in kind of uh, uh, make uh, doing justice to the amount you are paying you should have minimal time between final interview and the offer discussion even the interview process has to be as fast as possible because if uh, like i can see a lot of the in the chat that lot of you are uh, uh, a lot of you are from smaller organizations or mid-size uh, organizations. 
so in those cases you don't have that liberty to spend a lot of time in the interview process in the offer uh, roll out because if those things happen very fast that also shows that the organization is efficient uh, and the interest level of the candidate is maintained the moment you have like 2 3 weeks in offer roll out um, or you know even one week after the final interview it's quite high so everything the tag for every after one step to other step should not be more than 2 3 days and at least keep them informed that this is the timeline if you do that again that ha has a very good positive impact on the candidates and wherever you feel you don't have the bandwidth of course you will have to take help of uh, external vendor search firms one second my screen has frozen yeah so <laughs> you have to structure the salary to attract and retain talent depending on the level like we have discussed in the earlier slide also how you structure it in the way uh, in terms of deferring the pay uh, in terms of making it tax efficient in terms of fixed and variable uh, thing and again one one of the things i mentioned is one size doesn't fit all so you you can have certain things which are fixed like standard across most of your employees but there can be certain things like variable incentive structure that should be something which is dynamic based on performance based on certain qualitative quantitative factors you should be able to have different structures around it so that you can accommodate different kind of personalities in your organization don't always try to have this is the standard policy this is what we have so try to have some deviations if you want good talent uh, to come if you want different talent which is not existing in your organization right now you'll have to make certain deviations around it competition benchmarking see what your peers your other firms are paying firms above you or organizations bigger than you you'll have to keep doing that if you don't have the bandwidth again these are some things you'll have to take help from external vendors reasonable timeline should be given for acceptance of offer so once you have given the uh, offer do not give too much time and do not give too lesser time that you have to tell in a day at least give around 3 uh, 3 three to 5 days is the ideal time because uh, if the candidate has to leave he may like not accept he may not accept he may not join after accepting but it's better that they think about the offer clarify their doubts and accept it if you put a lot of pressure in terms of the accepting within the same day next day that can again discourage them to accept the offer so give them a reasonable time neither too high neither too uh, less be open to addressing all their queries because today it is a candidate uh, candidate market most of the times uh, so you should be open in discussing whatever is their query uh and give them that comfort if you have liked the candidate it is important for you to uh bring them on board then the ball is in your court uh to uh, make a case for them to join your organization offer to acceptance ratio is something which you need to you know see how much how many people are accepting the offer uh how many people are uh accepting the offer after uh giving the offer so accordingly have a buffer that in case this person does not accept the offer you should have another candidate in the pipeline next is your onboarding again uh, we have uh, we have uh, discussed this that offer to joining ratio is 50 to 80% so after you give offer not um, there is a chance that 50% people will drop so out of four offers you give uh, two may join it is even as high as 80% i have seen i speak to again a lot of these uh, practicing uh, firm they say that i met 10 jan ko offer diya in last one month everybody declined so you know that is very very high can be as high as 80% depending on the organization create an engagement plan so here is uh, a case where they don't accept as well as a case where they accept and don't join where they accept and don't join is also uh, there this engagement plan is very important so during that notice period with the employee serving one month two month it's important to be in touch with them see how you can engage with them you can send them some mails send them some messages 
keep them updated about what's happening. If there is completely zero communication between your offer stage to the joining, there is a higher chance that people may drop off. So engagement today is very important. Like, you know, social media is also all about engagement. Have a face time of juniors with seniors. Uh, at the, After they are selected, you may want to have some, you know, engagement, some interaction with the people they are going to work with. If you feel they are, you know, uh, mid-level people or even junior people, see how you can have some interaction with people who are already working in the organization. Create a settling plan. So after joining also, people may leave in very less time. So in those cases, after joining, if you cannot have a face time at that before joining, after joining, so you know, there are some organizations where you don't get to interact with the senior most person. So at least have a uh, have a plan that once in a month, once in two months, or quarterly, you try to meet the junior most person also in cases where you have a big hierarchy in your organization that that really helps when you when juniors get to meet the senior people not just they are reporting managers that helps uh on the joining just after joining also we we have seen that a lot of you know uh, this is there it's not organized properly the day one plan should be communicated in advance what is happening in on day one what are the things you'll be getting or what is your training what is your induction plan? It should be given one day before, not on the day the person is coming, he's clueless, he or she is clueless about what has to be done. Um, they are just sitting at one corner of the office. It, it does happen in a lot of organization and there is a little bit of awkwardness. So you don't want to be in a situation where you have done everything and after one or two days, the candidate did not like it and he left it because nobody spoke to him or things were not planned properly. So try to have send him a welcome mail or a plan, you know, a welcome mail that we are looking forward to uh, joining you next day or two days in advance. Tell him what is the plan going to be so that there is not that uncertainty ki first day pe kya hone wala hai. Do a buddy allocation where you have one person as a buddy. You can do a meet and greet. Uh, like, if person ko allocate kar do that whenever a new person comes, he's take, he or she is taken around and everybody meets him or you have during the lunch, you can have a tea party. In our organization, we have a party whenever a new person comes, we just order snacks, light snacks from out and everybody meets, everybody introduces themselves. Starter kit can be the kit, means it could be not the welcome kit necessarily. It can have all the documents which they have to read or any policy related things. So it could you have a starter kit, ki kya kya checklist kind of a thing for the uh, beginners. You should make the person uh, belonged in the organization as from the day they join, they should feel that they are uh, welcomed, they are belonging to the organization. You may actually send a welcome mail across the organization like this person has joined and then everybody congratulates and welcomes that person, if you have an intranet, it can be put on intranet along with the introduction of the person that this person has joined and everybody knows. If it's very small organization, maybe it's not needed because everybody meets. But if it is an organization which has uh, multiple offices or not everybody is in office, then it's good to have such things. You can have check-in surveys at regular intervals, especially for new joiners. You know, After 7 days, after 15 days, 30 days, or 2 months, you can have standard surveys on Google form, which HR can float if there is HR or you can have in your uh, onboarding any softwares which you use. You can have such things to understand what is it going because there will be certain hiccups which they might have faced, which as a leader, you may not even know. So those surveys will help you in uh, understanding the problem just at the start itself. Infrastructure wise, laptop, etc. Whatever you have to give them should be given on the same day and not delayed induction plan should be properly communicated to them. In terms of uh, retention, one or most of the things we have discussed will go in uh, will go in very well for your retention strategy. Also, on the training side, uh, apart for having retention, training is also one of the key aspects. You should train them on technical skills or processes. Uh, you can have uh, have them attend external webinars. You can have internal training session where seniors of the organization are uh, taking the like, session. 
study circle sessions, your residential courses, certificate courses, library, journals, knowledge database, recording of sessions circulated. So, this is a repository hai and you can keep encouraging people have some point system where people train themselves on technical skills and they get certain points. You can have a person in your organization who can be in charge to circulate what all things are happening in the training space by different organizations, say a CAC, it would be CAS, CITC and circulate to the other members. So that is also one role expansion which we talked about. You know, give them additional responsibilities and see how they are performing and just not make it monotonous about work. On soft skill, give them opportunity for internal presentation, encourage them to go for external presentations if they are interested, do mock client calls so that they can help. They also get to learn how to interact with uh, clients, email drafting sessions, accounting, whatever softwares you have, audit tax softwares. You can have soft skill trainings on that. You can have sessions on leadership. Some of the reasons why people, uh, you know, leave when we have done certain surveys between legal and finance professional over the years and uh, the reasons we have got for attrition, there are some of these standard and top reasons I would quote, work for more than 10 hours a day, partners tend to play favorites, if they feel that there is favoritism, though no organization would like to do it, but that should not be something which, which is a feeling which employees uh, get. Work-life balance, uh, promotions are not being given to deserving. Firm is not emotionally, mentally healthy place. No say in decision making. Work is monotonous. There's unending stress. So, of course, as a practicing CAs, we know we have a lot of timelines, deadlines. But at the same time, we'll have to see how do we balance it by doing certain other things. Having more manpower so that the stress on the existing staff is not too high. Right? So this is uh, my concluding remark on overall uh, the art of recruitment is, uh, you know, you put yourself in the shoes of the employee and see what best you can do for him or her. Um, and then you will definitely be able to do a lot of things in a better way. I tell this also to the employees that you put yourself in the shoes of the employer and to the employer, I would say that see how best you can make careers of people, you can train the people and it should always be a win-win situation for both you and the person. Uh, while we always, you know, employers always say that they teach the candidates, they leave after some time, but you need to evaluate why do they leave, what is in store for them outside uh, you have also been an employee at some point in time. So there will be certain things which are uncontrollable, but to the extent you can control certain things, you can uh, make your processes right. You can get the right people in. You can nourish them, uh, have the right culture, right engagement, and see what best you can do in your organization and your within your control to get the right talent inside the organization and the right talent uh, stick around in your organization. Thank you so much. I will now take up the questions which are there. I think a lot of questions are about uh, budget, const uh, like getting the, so one of the questions I'd ask that what are your challenges, whether it's quantity, quality, or uh, candidates not ex uh, accepting. So I see a lot of people have said that candidates do not accept uh, the offer for which you need to work on certain uh, small, small things like employer branding, putting across your value proposition, how you pitch to a client is how you have to pitch to the candidate and, uh, you know, take help uh, from external people. If you don't have, have a, either an internal HR, if you cannot afford or you don't think there is a need, take, uh, you know, help from others and, try to structure these things because this will help you in long term. So if anybody, I'll put my uh, details also in the comments. If anybody wants to reach out to me uh, individually, happy to help you. Uh, somebody has asked, small uh, CA firms are not getting articles, paid employees, and we are used as training ground, which I also say uh, said with employees leaving us after a year. So 
the articles, of course, there is a bit of shortage and you need to understand that they are also spoiled for choice. If they have multiple choices, they will get inclined to uh, join a bigger firm. So that challenge will be there. You have to make a value proposition for your firm. Uh, what are the flexibilities you can give to the uh, to the people? So if the firm is small, you may have to work around either the salary. If salary can be matched or little lower, but you can give some other flexibilities. You can give them more uh, autonomy. You can give the nature of work can be good. So that has to be communicated in a very a nice manner that what are your kind of clients, what is the learning which they get here as against them. And people will leave like that's the part of the uh, thing, but you have to see how you can incentivize. You may have some long-term incentives that after three years, you get certain amount. After two years, you get certain amount. So you uh, incentivize them both from monetary and non-monetary aspects, then possibly uh, you will be able to uh, reduce the challenge. I cannot say that challenge will completely go, but you will be able to reduce the uh, problem. So I have answered uh, anonymous Dhruv, uh, Kuldeep I answered. Uh, Dhruvin has asked what are the best job portals or other platforms to post job openings and hire candidates. So there are multiple uh, platforms which are there. It depends on what is the kind of uh, uh, people you are looking to hire. Uh, if you are looking to hire, um, you know, mid to senior level people, it will be different. If you are looking at freshers, it, whether, whether it's for chartered accountants, semi CAs. So LinkedIn is of course there. We at Wahura, we are ourselves a search firm. So if you want end to end recruitments, we are uh, helping organization for mid to senior level hiring under Wahura, and we also have a job portal called as uh, Leg of End Jobs, which was earlier called as Career Santa, which I was running for six years. And that's dedicated for legal and finance uh, jobs. Apart from that, there are uh, portals like Nokri, Shine, Times. So, of course, a bit of conflict of interest for me. But yeah, there are multiple job portals. But a lot of those job portals are very generic. In fact, all of them are generic. And uh, you get... Uh, bombarded with a lot of applications so you should have the time to uh, shortlist the right ones and conduct the interview so if you can ha have some niche portals that will reduce your bandwidth to hire these people that will uh, basically save on your bandwidth I meant to hire uh, people so even on the Legafin jobs platform we also have a special so one of the things which we are offering here is uh, we, uh, apart from the job postings, we also give offline support in terms of shortlisting the resumes and scheduling the interviews. And we also have a career page where you can do your branding from a candidate, from an employer standpoint. So, of course, the CA Institute does not allow branding if you are practicing CA from client acquisition standpoint. But as an employer, how is your culture, uh, photos and videos about your uh, employees, testimonials of your employees, all those are something we understand that that's a problem which small to medium firms uh, face. So we are creating special career pages for organizations on leg of and jobs. I have put the name of my portal. I have put my email ID and my phone number also on the chat. What activities can be planned for employees to feel ownership and build open culture? Okay. So uh, there can be a lot of engagement activities uh, when, you know, you can have once in a month, you can have uh, you know, certain games which can be organized. You can have uh, uh, different people who are... so. If you burden one person to be in charge all the time for this, of course, their bandwidth goes. You can have one person. It depends on how big your organization. This question is by Dhawal. If you have, you know, every month you have organize, uh, one person who can organize something in that month, you can divide them into teams, uh, have some competitions. You can ask them to give feedback. So, you know, every quarter you can have some sessions where they can give 
uh, ideas on how you can build your practice, how you can grow, and the people whose ideas are accepted are rewarded. That is one of the ways you can make them feel ownership. Reward and recognition definitely goes a long way in ownership. Like I had mentioned about sport awards. Uh, every quarter you have a town hall. Uh, bigger organizations have it. Even if in smaller organization, you can have a meeting where the owner, the CEO, the partners talk about the firm, what's happening in the firm. You know, communication, if the communication is open in terms of you sharing what's happening in the firms, uh, what's happening in your organization, especially where it's smaller organization and not everyone knows everything, that will definitely help in uh, help them have a ownership feeling that you know we are being told what's happening in the organization. So every quarter, what are the new things which the firm has done? What are the achievements of the firm? You can talk about them, uh, and wherever the people contribute to the firm in terms of their growth, in terms of certain initiatives, they Take, you can incentivize them monetarily or non-monetarily. You can give them vouchers. You can sponsor, uh, you know, uh, have a, uh, as simple as a lunch. Every every quarter have a budget for a lunch party. So, you know, that are small things which will help you in, uh, help people interact with each other and speak to each other apart from work. Uh, how should we deal with the high skill but arrogant mindset? Okay. So this is a way, you know, this is a very case to case uh, thing. So I don't know exact facts of the case. So it will be difficult to comment on this. But uh, uh, arrogant uh, in what sense is something I do not know. So it will be difficult to comment. Uh, but it's the solution to any problem is you have to speak to the person and understand what are their expectations from the role of their skill they are very highly skilled but uh, the attitude is wrong right we discuss about attitudes when you say arrogant so is it because you are saying the senior is arrogant or the junior is arrogant I don't know that's not mentioned but it's just a conversation which will have to be done with the person to understand uh, what is there in their mind if you cannot speak to them as a direct person so if you are the person who is directly dealing with it and facing it you may have to have a third party intervene and see what is uh, going wrong and why is the person behaving in an arrogant manner Vaibhav has asked what should be majorly considered while hiring employee in a small size organization and at the same time attract and retain them I think most of the points I have covered if you have any specific questions we can discuss 101 uh, Sachin has asked every organization has a reputation in the market uh, that said and heard thing also affect recruitment. I didn't understand this. That said and heard thing. So if you are saying that, uh, you know, in the market, if your organization has certain reputation, but all of it may not be true, uh, that is something that's a challenge which is going to be there all the time. So see if you can, whenever people exit, you try to have uh, amicable settlement if even if things are going haywire see uh, see that you know the reputation of the organization is not uh, put on stake there are a lot of platforms today where people write negative things about an organization so there are ways and means in which you can have that removed but uh, in general you should always end on a happy note to the extent possible if the candidate is doing something like going absconding or, you know, doesn't want to have good relations, that's different. But if a person has decided to leave, it's important that you do the exit in an amicable manner rather than uh, getting into a conflict. So that when the person leaves, at least he goes with a good taste and he or she can recommend people to your organization. And if not recommend, at least not say bad things about your organization after leaving. Budget constraints, yes, that, that will be there. Uh, you'll have to see how you can uh, incentivize the candidates. Maybe, you know, based on variables, if you cannot incentivize on fixed salary, try to incentivize them on retention basis and on performance basis. Pooja had asked, uh, how do you tackle 30 to 40% hike 
so you will have to check in that situation you know why are they asking for this hike so of course we also agree that as a search consultants that 40 percent is too high 30 percent will depend on from where they are going to which organization you have to ask them that you know what do you why do you think that you deserve that salary do you think they actually uh like do you think that they don't deserve that salary or do you think they do not deserve a 30 percent so if they are drawing certain amount and you just feel that the uh, amount 30 percent is a problem or you know absolutely absolute terms you, know, you have an issue you will have to figure out that see how good uh, they are um again your if you know you cannot give up front thing and you want to see their performance then you have to uh, play the card of um, retention bonus and variable based on performance and you document that so one of the things i missed is when you say variable bonus also a lot of organizations keep it very uh, open ended they say that you your salary is say 7 lakhs 7 lakhs plus variable as per performance rather than saying 7 lakhs as per performance you put a number to it you may say that your bonus will be say 2 lakhs rupees which is subject to performance so they are ctc directly from 6 lakhs because uh, so i said 6 or 7 i don't know so say 6 is fixed and 2 lakhs is bonus uh, so that's 8 lakhs 2 lakhs is subject to performance performance but you are still putting that number in your document and you say that the ctc is 8 lakh so if you are really good if you perform very well then you get full bonus if you don't then you get proportionately less so in the mind of the candidate he will take that the ctc is 8 lakh and that is something which a lot of bigger organizations do they put a uh, even in law firms i come from a law firm background in law firms they typically put the entire variable 100 percent of the variable in your document they put a number to it and that is subject to performance so the candidate also knows that out of that 2 lakhs, I know if I underperform, I will get 50% mile ga, mera 1 lakh hoga, and I will end up getting 7 lakhs. So he will do his math as, at his end, but he will at least get some ballpark figure that I get 2 lakh maximum. Mil sakta hai. So salary, you know, wo optic wise, I am saying CTC is very important that you are 8 lakh leke ja hai wo apne mind mein ki wo 6 lakh leke ja hai. It's better wo 8 lakh leke jaye baad mein wo apna calculate karke soche ki shayad 7 lakh milega mujhe agar mera average performance bhi hua uh, and if you keep it very open ended he will not know at all ki kya milne wala hai what is the maximum i may not get anything you know so then generally they have that they go in the zone ki i may just not get anything i may just get a 50000 i may just get 1 lakh there is no certainty but if you put a number to it you also get the clarity ki maximum kitna ho sakta and based on your past performance you will definitely have some numbers so variable also can be put, a number can be put and fixed bonus can definitely be a fixed number. Don't, uh, you know, commitment, wherever, you know, two, three people have talked about commitments, it's always going to be a moral commitment in your offer letter. If there are people you are taking at a little additional salary or you're making certain exceptions you may say a sentence saying that it is expected that our uh, relationship would be for long term and we expect a minimum commitment of two years three years but do not get into a bond kind of a situation or do not make it as a mandatory thing the moment you restrict them by doing those things even people who would have otherwise been there with you for a few years will not even join you so by just taking something, you cannot force anybody. So end of the day, you cannot force anybody to stay in your organization. If things are good, they will stay. If things are not good, even a bond will not work. So bond and all should not be uh, something you should do. But you may add best if you think that the, you are paying a little higher than a, high, uh, a higher salary and you, you feel the risk is there. You may at least mention that as an understanding that a commitment or it is expected for you to be, you know, language can be there, which is a milder language as against any compulsory commitment which is there. Recording of this session, I think, will be available. So, uh, I think they are uploaded on YouTube, but I'm not sure. Um, maybe somebody from the uh, ICI can answer that. So, I think I have answered everything in the chat session. And uh, then Q&A also, I can see any other questions. We have answered everything. Yeah. Any other questions? 
uh, from the audience. I hope you found the session useful. I have put my uh, details also in the uh, chat box and happy to connect with you separately. I think every question is answered very well. Uh, yeah. So, and I think the video is uh, usually put on the website of WIRC in a week's time or something. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, on behalf of WIRC and all the participants, uh, I would ex uh, extend my warm uh, vote of thanks to Ms. Namita. I think she's uh, like, uh, this was a very uh, uh, like engaging session and like this is a very useful session, which that is the reason that we are having it the second time at WIRC. And this time we had around more than 40, 50 participants, I think 40, 45 around participants. And uh, uh, like you have very well answered like how having designations or hierarchy in the firm is important and how uh, to solve this retainer uh, retaining issues in uh, the organizations uh, like uh, how to deal with work-life balance and uh, giving work satisfaction uh, to have a long-term uh, retain retention uh, that would matter like having rewards and recognitions uh, in organizations which CA firms usually don't have. So all that uh, well said, like having, uh, I really take this as like your attitude is more important than your capability that, uh, that you mentioned was uh, uh, like really it is important. Attitude is, attitude is more important than capability. Uh, so with that note, I thanks Namita and uh, wish to see you more and having more sessions with you yeah thank you so much hina yeah. i have uh, again put my contact details yes on yes some people have again asked it uh, okay. my email